So let's get into uh, the big topic of today. Um, as you know, Business English with Christina, this is us, uh, and we're here to help you to become more confident um, and to feel better doing business in English, including, of course, improving your English skills, your confidence in English, but also your business skills, like how you do business. And today, today our masterclass, it's Be Brave, Connect with Prospect prospects um, and grow your business in English. So we're going to look at how to do that um, and the role, especially that small talk and, you know, meeting people plays in growing your business, growing your career, making those contacts and advancing in your life, your career and all of that. Um, on the program today, uh, we're going to talk about, uh, of course, you know, what you what you're going to get from this masterclass, why that is important, and then maybe the big thing that you're here for today, the things that you can say and the exact scripts that you need for networking, for connecting with people and growing your business through that. So what you'll get today, um, in addition to the English, let's say, the first thing is just the validation to feel that, yes, it's okay if you struggle, if you have difficulties to network and get clients in English. You are not alone. Um, I would say even native speakers have difficulties with networking and getting clients. You have, of course, English also to deal with. So it's okay. It's totally normal. And we're going to help you with it. Um, hopefully, I hope that you'll come away with more motivation. Um, a lot of people, you know, they don't like networking. They don't like small talk. They don't like selling themselves, all of that stuff. But I hope that you'll feel motivated to do it because you'll see that it is that important. It is very important for your business. And of course, the confidence uh, maybe you'll see that it's easier than you imagined and that, yes, you can do this. And just to introduce uh, myself a little bit for those of you who maybe don't know um, and who are new to Business English with Christina. So, of course, my name is Christina and I am the founder of Business English with Christina, which Today has uh, more than 500,000 subscribers um, who are part of our community, who are learning with us. Um, on the team, we've got 15 uh, collaborators based in nine countries. So we are also uh, an international team as well. Um, I'm a certified mental performance coach, um, helping people uh, to, let's say, have the mindset and the mentality that they need for performance. Um, and also I am a certified neurolanguage coach, uh, which is helping your brain to learn English better, let's say. Uh, I also have a diploma in teaching English to adults from Cambridge in English in England. And I've been teaching business English since 2004, since I arrived in France. Um, I am a C2 or bilingual in French. Uh, that's where I live um, now. And I also speak a bit of German and Italian, but I'm originally from Mississippi over in the USA. And that's the photo. You can see, of course, the famous um, paddle boat that's very emblematic of Mississippi and the Mississippi River. All right. So that's a little bit about me. Um, now, we're going to look at the first thing, which is getting clients in English when it's not your native language. So, like I said, if you feel like this is difficult, you are not alone. I've been coaching people for 18 years now, and I would, you know, roughly estimate that probably 95% of the people I work with say that they are uncomfortable with networking, with small talk, with talking to potential clients. Like, just don't like it. They don't feel comfortable doing it. They don't feel confident doing it. They don't feel good doing it. 
Um, and networking is actually one of the most requested topics in the courses and the live events that we do. Um, as you can see, a little poll that I ran on LinkedIn recently, networking definitely came uh, above all of the other topics because it's not easy, but it can be done. Now, as you know, a non-native speaker, when you are trying to grow your business or also it could be grow your career, uh, you're, you have to mix a lot of different skills, not just English. Yes, there are speaking skills in English. Yes, there are listening skills in English. Those are important. Uh, but there's also social selling skills. What I mean by social selling is, you know, promoting yourself, promoting your activity, your business, uh, but in a, let's say, human way, not in a very like pushy, uh, scammy way, but in a, in a social way. And of course, cultural knowledge, depending on, you know, who you're working with, if, you know, if they're from a different culture, um, if you're working with a company in a different culture, it's important to also have the knowledge of that culture. And one thing that could hold you back, that can prevent you uh, from, I would say, trying, you know, going out and contacting people and meeting people and networking is a lot of negative self-talk. Um, and we all do this. Like I, like, I do this not for English, but for, you know, other things, saying like, oh, I'm just not good at this. I'm not good at English, or I'm not good at networking in my language, or, you know, I don't like small talk. It's superficial. It's boring. If I have the good technical skills, people will choose me. I don't need good social skills, etc. And these are some limiting beliefs, which can really stop you from going out and getting the opportunities that are definitely possible for you. Um, and that's really a, a pity, I would say. But as I said before, native speakers also have to work to develop these skills and to grow their business. Um, a lot of times when we speak a foreign language, uh, when we can't do something in that language, we say it's because of my language skills. You know, I, I did this in French for a long time. I said, oh, it's, it's because of my French skills that I can't, you know, call a company and present my, my business, et cetera. It's not always the language skills. Sometimes it's just your, the skills, the business skills. Um, but of course, the good news is we can learn those things. And it's a big mistake to neglect your networking skills. Even if you don't speak perfect English, even if you make mistakes, you can still do this well. Now, when we talk about good social skills, we're first gonna contrast that with bad social skills. Um, not speaking to people, not contacting people, not you know engaging in the conversation and showing interest in other people, this can create lost opportunities for your career, for your business, for your life. So there is definitely a cost to bad social skills, even though we don't always see the cost because it's not like we have something and then we lose it. It's just that we never get it because of the social skills, the bad social skills. In contrast, if you develop your social skills and your social skills in English, this creates chances for you to advance in your career, to advance in your business. And uh, as we all know, of course, all of that relates to your life in general. And a little quote um, that is from a book that I would definitely recommend if you're able to read a book in English or if a translation of this book exists in your language. Um, the, the title in English is Reach. The author is Andy Malinsky, and it's all about going out of your comfort zone, rising to the challenge, and building confidence, uh, especially for your professional life. And Dr. Malinsky says that you can be the most technically skilled worker in the world, 
but your ability to progress in your business is dependent on your ability to build and maintain positive relationships with people. So really your social skills, if we summarize, you know, really in a nutshell, your social skills will determine your success in a lot of areas in your business and in your career. And if you're working internationally, a lot of that happens for better or for worse, it happens in English. Now, some hesitations that you might have when you are faced with, let's say, a situation where you can go and network and meet and connect with people. You know, you're not sure how to start the discussion. Maybe you're afraid that they will judge your level of English. Um, maybe you feel okay speaking, but then you're afraid that you won't understand the other person because of their accent, because of uh, noise, because of um, their, I don't know, the, the vocabulary that they're using. And maybe you're worried if you would have enough vocabulary for, let's say, continuing a conversation. Often people will tell me, I can start a conversation. I can talk about maybe some superficial or, you know, basic topics. But then if the conversation goes deeper, very quickly, I don't have the vocabulary. And that is a legitimate um, concern, I would say. But again, good news, it can be um, improved. So let's go deeper into this. And before we get into this, if at any point during this masterclass, if you have a question or if something is not clear, please feel free um, to put it in the chat um, and we'll make sure that I'm keeping an eye on the chat. So we'll make sure that um, I answer your, your question. All right, let's look at how to introduce yourself and your business in a um, not boring way, let's say. And this is what I like to call a ping pong introduction because it is like a game of ping pong. You're not giving a monologue to introduce yourself. You are going back and forth with the other person so that it feels very natural, very comfortable, um, very human, let's say. And you wanna just let this um, conversation flow so that you can progressively introduce yourself your business and what you do. Uh, for example, and I'll read this um, dialogue to you. Um, I don't think we've met. I'm Lisa. Nice to meet you. I'm Colin. So what do you do exactly, Colin? Um, in a nutshell, I help American pharmaceutical companies get into the European market. Oh, that sounds complicated. Uh, that sounds interesting. Is it complicated? It can be. So we help them with marketing, cultural differences, regulations, all that stuff. And what about you? What do you do? So you can see in that conversation, it's a dialogue. It's very natural. It's not giving all of the details about what you do in one presentation, but getting to know each other progressively and little by little. And to do this, of course, you can ask about the other person. So what do you do exactly? You can ask about their work history. How long have you been doing that? You can ask about their professional interests. How did you get into, you know, whatever, whatever they just told you about? Like, how did you get into graphic design or how did you get into pharmaceuticals? Um, do you like art or do you like, I don't know, the medical field, et cetera, et cetera. But what you're doing is you're, you're getting to know each other, but also getting to know, let's say, what you can offer the other person or what they can offer you professionally. You can ask about, you know, how they started their company, if they have a company, you know, how did you get the idea for your company, like how did you get the idea for Commune Française? It's a friend of mine who has a company uh, who teaches French to foreigners, for example. You could ask, how did you get the idea to start that company? 
Um, and then if we just go back and we look at another example of a conversation, you can see how smooth this flows, but also how much it allows you to talk about your company and what you offer, but also to know what the other person can offer. And I'll read this dialogue for you. So what about you? What do you do? Oh, I actually have my own cosmetics company, Green You. So I do a little bit of everything, basically. Oh, and how long have you had your company? About four years now, but I've worked in cosmetics for 14 years. I used to work at Body Shop. Okay, and how did you get the idea for Green You? Well, basically, I wanted to create products that were even more eco-friendly than Body Shop, like all organic, only natural ingredients, that kind of thing. So again, now you know what they do, the experience that they've got. So that's some um, proof, let's say, of the, the solidity uh, of their company. And also, you know why they did it. So you can start learning about their values and what's important to them. So you can see if maybe you're a match for, I don't know, a potential partnership or a potential business deal. What you want to do is not make a presentation. When someone asks, what do you do? You do not need to present everything about your job, about your company, about your history, about your family life, all of that. But go back and forth like a ping pong game. Uh, you don't want to dominate the conversation. That is bad social skills, let's say. Um, but you want to share the speaking time but also to make it easier for you, you're sharing the responsibility for continuing the conversation. So it's not always you who has to, to drive the conversation or to lead the conversation. And uh, before we look at the secret of joining a group conversation, um, any questions about this ping pong introduction? Uh, we'll see if we have any questions, if you want to put them in the chat, or if we're all good, I'll count down to five, four, three, two, one, no questions. Okay, so then I will uh, assume that we're good to continue on to the secret of joining a group conversation. The first thing, when you, uh, now this is really, this is, I would say, first of all, a kind of a scary exercise to do um, because you're approaching now, not just one person that you don't know, you're approaching several people that you don't know, and they may already know each other, and you don't really know what territory you're going into. So this, this can be um, a very you know, intimidating experience at, at first, but the more you practice it, the easier it will become. And there are some strategies that you can use to make you feel more confident when you do this. First thing, if you see a group, you know, approach the group, kind of stand near the group, make eye contact with other members, um, but don't stand there silently for too long. And you can just ask, you know, after you've made eye contact, hey, do you mind if I join you just to listen in? So you're just asking permission to come into the conversation. Now, often, of course, people say, yeah, sure. Um, you know, they'll welcome you into the circle. And you then you want to just continue listening for a while. You don't want to come in and dominate the conversation. Um, and when I say be the idiot in the room, what I mean is you're not there to prove that you know everything or that you are the expert in a topic. Even if they're discussing a topic that you might already know a lot about, try to find something where you can ask why. You know, for example, if someone is discussing, um, I don't know, their decision to try to raise funds for their company and they decided to go to London instead of New York, 
for example, um, you could say, wait, so why was, why was London the better choice for you? Because then you're encouraging discussion, you're showing interest, uh, you're asking for clarification for a situation, and you're getting to know, again, more about the other people without dominating the conversation and imposing your expertise on the others. Um, you know, nobody likes that kind of person. Um, but once you have done that, you can connect the discussion to you in a very brief way. For example, okay, right, yes. Um, it's like how in my work, you know, sometimes we have to decide if we want to work with uh, the American market or the European market. It's a choice. So you can connect that discussion very briefly to maybe a current project, to your business's activity, to maybe your reason for attending the event, whatever, but you're just giving a little hint about something about what you do to make that connection with the others and with the discussion. And of course, like we said, the idea is not to arrive and to pitch your product or your services directly, but you can offer to tell them more later. You're not going to force them to listen to your pitch. Uh, you can simply say, you know, I can tell you more about what we do later if you want. And, you know, most people will say yes, to be polite. Um, but I would say if they say no, don't, don't worry about it. Don't be offended. It means maybe that person is not a, um, a good connection for your business or for your uh, professional goals. And in that case, you're not wasting your time and your energy talking about what you do to someone who, you know, is not interested. Um, so I would say, if they say yes, great, that could become a, a possible opportunity. If they say no, that's okay. You're saving your time and energy with someone who is maybe not going to be a good business contact for you. But if they say yes, of course, you want to make sure that you follow up so you get their contact information. And very easy, you can simply just say, what's the best way to stay in touch? And they'll give you maybe their email address, their phone number, their LinkedIn profile, whatever. Um, but you'll have a way to connect with them so that you're sure to follow up after. Now, you've been discussing with people. It's time to leave the conversation. Um, but sometimes this can be a little tricky because it's like, how do I get out of the conversation in a polite way and leave a good impression? Um, maybe generally not a good idea to say like, hey, I have to run to the restroom real quick, the toilets, the bathroom, all of that. It just sounds a little awkward. Um, so if you're using that, forget it. We're going to look at some other ways that you can exit a conversation politely and professionally. You might ask the person like, hey, are you going to be here for a while? Like, are they going to be at the event, you know, for longer? Because maybe you can reconnect. Um, simply ask, hey, are you going to be here for a while? Because I want to catch up with a few people before it gets too late. So I want to, you know, I need to go and talk to this person or that person, or I have, I don't know, just some other people that I need to speak to at this event before they leave, before the event is late, etc. But then you can, of course, say that I do want to stay in touch. Do you have a card or anything? So again, saying like, hey, it was really nice talking to you. Um, I'm interested to continue the conversation. Can we keep in touch? And you know, how can I contact you later to discuss, to continue the conversation perhaps, or to get to know each other better, or to explore some potential business opportunities. And then before you leave the conversation, it's always nice to say thank you. You know, thanks, I really enjoyed our conversation. Um, Lori, for example, it's a good way of remembering, reminding yourself of their name. Um, and just say, I'll be in touch. I'll contact you, you know, after the event, for example. 
And that way you've politely left the conversation so that you can go and connect with other people and you know, you've left a good impression and you know how to connect with the other person later when the time is better. Okay, any questions about leaving a conversation and how to do that? And again, if you want to put your question in the chat, we'll see if we can answer your question. And I'll give you a little countdown of five, four, three, two, and one. No questions. All right. Yeah, no questions. All right. Sounds good. Okay, good. Then let's go ahead and look at the subtle art of following up. So now you've met these people, you've got their contact information. Um, it's someone who is, you know, you want to continue the conversation with. It's interesting. And now it's time to follow up, to contact them after the first conversations. Generally, this will probably be by a written message, um, email, maybe a LinkedIn message. Um, generally, it's unless you've maybe made an appointment to call each other, the first follow-up message is generally written. Um, and this is a template, uh, a model that you can use. Uh, like I said, you'll get these slides um, so you can have this and you can use it for yourself. Um, but I'll read it to you so we can check that the vocabulary is all okay. Um, so hi, let's say, hi, Lindsay. Um, it's Christina Rebuffet, your first and last name. And we met at, in the context of your meeting. So maybe we met at um, the Consumer Electronics Show. Uh, it was really great talking about your topic. So it was really great topic, talking about, I don't know, um, drones with you. And I remember that you said um, you're trying to uh, sell your drones in the American market and you want, you, you didn't know how to do that. So again, talking about going back, reminding them of the context of the conversation, the things that you talked about, so they can remember you. And then you want to share something with them that they will find useful. Like I came across this article and I thought you might enjoy it. And you give them the link to the article that's related to the topic of discussion that you had at the event or something, just something that will be interesting for them. Um, and I thought it might be able to help you with your research into the American electronics market. Let me know if you'd like to talk about it. Thanks again, Christina. So again, you're showing this person, hey, um, I remember you from the event. I remember what we talked about because it was interesting. Um, I remember maybe the problem or the challenge you that we talked about, and I have something interesting and helpful for you. I just want to share it with you. Um, and you can see again, here is a just another example of an email that follows that structure, but it's a different um, topic. It says, hi, name, it's Christina Robuffet. We met at the Learning Technologies Salon in Paris. It was really great talking about podcasts for learning with you. Um, I remember you were looking for some good podcasts for learning English. So I came across this podcast episode about pitching your company in English, and I thought you might enjoy it. And I would put a link to the podcast. Uh, I might be able to help you with how to present your company in English. Let me know if you'd like to talk about it. Thanks again. So again, what you see here is showing the, you remember the person, giving them something that is going to be useful for them and just letting them know, hey, if you would like me, if you want to talk about how maybe I can help you, here's an invitation to let me know. So again, maybe the person will respond, hey, great, yeah, when can we talk? Uh, maybe they'll just say, hey, thanks for the podcast. I'll keep your contact information for one day when I might need it. Um, and maybe they'll get no, maybe you'll get no response because they're very busy and it just um, slips their mind uh, to respond to you. But what you've done is, again, made yourself a little more visible, a little more memorable to this person. So if 
they're interested immediately, you know, they have an invitation, an open door to contact you. If they're not interested right now, at least you've just reminded them who you are, what you do, and how you can help them. Now, a couple of tips for following up is to wait a while, maybe one to two weeks. There's, there's no hard, fast rule about the duration to wait, but just wait a little after the end of the event, uh, the end of the event. If you write to them like the day after or the evening that you met, it might be too early. Maybe they're busy attending the event. Maybe they're busy catching up on work that they couldn't do at the event, etc. So just wait a little while. Uh, you know, provide some value. Show them that you're helpful and useful to that person. You know, don't just say, hey, uh, it was great meeting you. Let's keep in touch. It was nice talking to you, whatever. Um, that is, it's nice, but it's pretty empty. And it's not very memorable. And remember that in this kind of, let's say, um, relationship, you have to play the long game. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, some people, they can take a long time to make a decision or to need the services that you offer, the products that you offer. So you want to make sure that you stay fresh in their mind so that when they do need your services, you're the first person they think of. Um, so maybe that means connecting with them on social media like LinkedIn um, or any other social media there, Facebook, maybe more for personal relationships. Let's say just LinkedIn, connect with them on LinkedIn. Um, maybe send them a little follow-up email after, I don't know, three months, six months. But again, following uh, this role of providing value and showing them how you can help them rather than just saying, hey, I'm just checking in. Do you need English lessons or whatever your product or your service is? Uh, and before we go into a little recap of today's masterclass and the lessons, any questions about the subtle art of following up? Again, you can put those in the chat if you have any questions or not. Okay, I'll say we've got no questions. So a little recap here, um, just to help you to remember all of these lessons from today. Remember, it's okay to feel not good at pitching, at networking, at reaching out, at connecting with people in English. Um, it's okay if you feel that way today, you can fix that. Um, remember that your you know, good social skills will create business opportunities. Um, so if you, I would say the more you do this, the more you create the chance of having that opportunity that arrives. And as we say in English, it's not what you know, it's who you know. So even if you are the most technically skilled expert in your field, if nobody knows about what you do, if nobody knows how to contact you, uh, if nobody knows your name, your business, they're, they're not going to be able to contact you. Um, and let's see, Lindsay says, when do you send your second follow-up email? Oh, good question. So if you send that first follow-up after an event um, and you maybe don't hear back from the person, you know, I would say you can send a follow-up email depending on the conversation that you had with the person. And if it was about, hey, I'm interested in what you're doing. Like if there was an interest that was expressed. If the other person expressed an interest in what you do, um, go ahead and follow up maybe a few weeks after um, because maybe they're busy. Maybe your email went into their spam folder. Uh, maybe it was just not a good time, whatever. But you can definitely follow up with a second email a few weeks maybe after the first email. You don't want to harass the person, um, but you don't want to just disappear into, you know, the, the realms of the internet. Um, 
And Lori says, can I change that? It's who knows you. Yes, exactly. So I, get, I would say maybe the um, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Um, and it's also who knows you. So it, it, maybe we can say it works both ways. Um, who you know, maybe to ask for those opportunities, but also who knows you to contact you when they need your services. Just a, a little recap, remember your ping pong introduction, you can prepare this. Um, what I recommend for preparing is when you get these slides, go back and look at those questions that we looked at together and ask yourself, how would I answer this question? Uh, be prepared to talk about your company or your the company that you work at, to talk about your work history, to talk about how you got started in your industry, et cetera. Um, prepare those questions to ask, but also prepare your questions that you give. Uh, when you're at an event and you're joining group conversations, again, it can be a little scary to go and to approach a group, but just, you know, go join the group, make eye contact, ask a question um, to participate in the discussion and make your connections that way. We also said, looked at how you can leave the discussion politely and authentically, and also how to follow up with something that is valuable for them, but also valuable for you because you're, again, just reinforcing that positive impression that they have of you. And I would say, again, just reinforcing that relationship so that they don't forget who you are, what you do, and how you can help them. Now, um, something valuable I'm, that I might ask for from you is if you know someone who wants to become better at their business and better at English, simply to just share my website with them. Um, if you're here, it's because you've seen um, either my YouTube videos, my blog posts, or my posts on LinkedIn. Um, there was something that attracted you uh, to Business English with Christina. So if you know someone who could also benefit from all of this, please just, you know, share my, share my website with them. And then they can go and they can look at it. And if they like it, fantastic. And if they don't, um, that's okay too. I'm, I'm not the only English trainer out there. Um, and if this is you, uh, if you are someone who says, well, I really need to um, improve my social skills, my English skills, my business skills in English, uh, just to let you know that my virtual immersion coaching program um, is opening on yeah, this week, um, on the 1st of September, Thursday, September 1st, enrollments will be open for two weeks. Um, and this is one of our most powerful programs, I would say. Um, that's the, uh, the feedback that we've gotten from a lot of students, that it really does help them to take their English and take their career or their business to the next level. Um, so just to let you know, that program is opening. And if you would like more information about it, of course, I would be happy to meet with you and tell you about it. Um, and here's how you can get in contact. Um, you can go to my website and you can sign up to get a free business English lesson each week and also get the information about the Business English Mastery Coaching Program. Um, Send me a connection request on LinkedIn. I'm more than happy to stay connected with you on LinkedIn, um, where I share a lot of uh, resources, stories, posts, et cetera. Uh, and of course, classic by email, um, contact at christinarubafay.com. Um, 